The next day resulted in Team 10 and Osma reporting to the main meeting building that the exams began at. 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and through the doors in the back of the meeting room that had initially opened before the first test of the exams, the three proctors, Anko, Kitsuchi, and Al, walked with the remaining passing teams in tow to join the ones that had passed the previous day. These teams were considerably more banged up, and some looked as if they had even received medical treatment before coming here. So now, the party was all queued up, ready to go. They had 12 teams, no more, no less, but that was still 36 guinea, quite a few. Joining Team 10, Team Guy, the team from the sound with Mim- Joining Team 10, Team Guy, the team from the sound with the mummy looking guy, the team from the cloud with the two girls and the one boy, the older Mist team, the sand team with Gara, and the stone team with the guy that periodically tried to mad dog Naruto, and the team from Waterfall, were three more teams for the Leaf, Team 7, Team 8, and Kabuto's team. Kabuto's team, in addition to Kabuto of course, had two more old guinea. Both wore veils over their faces and dressed similar to Kabuto. One wore smaller eyeglasses than Kabuto and the other wore sunglasses. Both wore headbands in the style of bandanas on their heads. As well as them, there was a team from the Hidden Rain. All of them wore white outfits that looked similar to straight jackets if they could be described. They each wore breathing masks from their mouths and had claws over their eyes. One of them had two holes cut in the cloth so that he could see. Another had only one eye visible, and the last had both eyes concealed. The one with both eyes visible had spiky brown hair. The guy with one eye visible wore his head bent in a bandana style, and the final teammate had bushy hair. That rounded out the field, but the question was, what was going to happen now? The second test was complete, so was that it? Were they all tuning now? Or did they have to do something else to reach that goal? As the teams all stood in line in front of the three proctors with their respective joining leaders standing behind them, Al spoke to them. I'd like to officially congratulate each and every one of you for succeeding where all the other teams have failed. You've all passed the second exam. Now you can rest easy for the time being. We're not jumping directly into another test just yet. That got more than a few sighs of relief for some of the remaining guinea. And that put a smirk on the faces of Anko and Kitsuchi and even got a laugh from some of the more laid back Jonin in attendance. Kitsuchi walked <coughs> forward and cleared his throat to begin speaking. There's one more test that you can all choose to partake in. That being said, your performance thus far has already been taken into account. Still, this test will not take place for five more weeks, giving you the time to recover if need be and train to improve. Kiba was still rather tired and after hearing that the next test wouldn't be for five more weeks, wanted Kitsushi to cut to the chase so that he could leave and get some rest. Train and improve for what? What's the next test already? Before that, we need to get your names and team grouping. Anko cut in, standing by a group of proctors ready to take down whatever information they were going to write. Will the Jonin all state this information at this time? Kakashi spoke up first. Hitake Kakashi's team from the village hidden in the leaves. Uchiha Sasuke, Akimichi Choji, and Haruno Sakura. Next was Asuma from the village hidden in the leaves. Sarutobi Asuma's team. Nada Shikamaru, Uzumaki Naruto, and Yamanaka Ino. Jonin Baki's Ginnin Squad, representing the village hidden in the sand. The man with Gar's team said, he wore a turban and a veil over one half of his face. God of the Sand, Tamati, and Konkuro. A man with an oxygen mask over his mouth like the other rain getting there at the moment was next. He had no cloth over his eyes and wore a flag jacket over the exact same suit his Ginning wore. Village hidden in the rain's last Ginning team from Jonin Sensei Ugatsu, Oboro, Mumbui, and Kagari. Guy was next up and with a huge smile on his face said, My Togai splitted Ginning team from the Hidden Leaf Village, Rock Lee. Yuga Neji and Tintin! With that, his teeth let off a shimmer. From the village hidden in the mist, and Jonin Shiwin Tosui, a black, spiky haired man wearing a mist flag jacket vest with the long sleeve shirt underneath. The sleeves are long enough to reach three inches past his hands, and he said, Hojo Arata, Obata Momoko, and Geku Dojin, the tall, older guinea with the black and silver hair, the girl with the short, dark hair, and what seemed to be a large shield on her back and the guinea wearing the thick suit that basically covered his whole body, all nodded respectively. Next, the Joni from Waterfall came forward. My team from the village hidden in the waterfalls, Fu, Hoyuki, and Dorobo. He said, speaking of the girl with light green hair and orange eyes, the normal looking brown haired kid, and the boy with spiky black hair that had strange green and red eyes. Representing the village hidden in the leaves, Kuro and I said in a straightforward manner, Aburama Shino, Inuzuka Kiba, and Hyuga Hinata. She did not fail to notice the gaze of Neji on her team from where he was, even if it was only for a moment. A sound Joni, with a smirk on his face and a long black ponytail, spoke next. From the village hidden in the sound, Kinuta Dosu, Abumizaku, and Suji Ken. A normal looking leaf Joni, with puffy light brown hair and glasses, was subsequently next. From the village hidden in the leaves, Yakushi Kabuto, Suguri Misumi, and Akuro Yoroi. The cloud team did not Joni present for them. Much of the confusion of many, the Cloud team did not have a Jonin present for them, 
much to the confusion of many. Thus, the blonde girl with the intimidating calm expression and the chest that should not be that abundant for a 14 year old took up the introduction duties for her team. In place of the Joni meant to be here for this team, I will introduce my squad. My name is Samui. Uncle stopped her and asked a question. And where's your Joni? We sent word to everyone that this thing was at four. You can't tell me that they still blew it off. Samui shook her head. Our Joni was never here in the first place. He isn't allowed to leave the cloud for certain reasons. So we came under the command of another Joni whose actual team has already been eliminated. The boy on her team shook his head and placed a sucker in his mouth. Oh man, this is it going to be Sensei's fault that we get disqualified? Maybe they'll kill us all thinking we're suspicious terrorists or something. Everyone in the room looked at him with a deadpan expression. Just shut up, Amoy. The red-haired girl next to him said, holding her head as if she had a headache. Al took that moment to give his input. There are times when a team has to proceed in a mission without proper squad leaders, so in this case it's allowed. If only this once. Please continue to introduce your team. Samui nodded and continued. My teammates are Amoy and Kadoi. As I've already said, my name is Samui. We represent the village hidden in the clouds. With herself and her team introduced, she stepped back into formation with her fellow Cloud Guinea, Kyoin Wukai from the Village Hidden in the Stones, introducing his Guinea team. A rather plain looking Stone Guinea announced Hazashi, Mizaru, and Jun. Mm, now that the formalities are out of the way, let's get to the fun part of the explanation. Tell the kitties what's next, old man. Al took offense to the old man crack, but other than the gnashing of teeth and the mumbling of back in his day, he didn't let it show. All 36 of you will be entered in a 12 team tournament meant to be held in a public place of meeting in 5 weeks time. You will all be observed by each of your respective villages, the daimyos of multiple countries, and potential clientele. Performing to the best of your abilities and showing your true merit as a shinobi will be paramount. But don't just think that winning matches will get you promoted. Kitsuchi said cryptically. The brawny stone guinea seemed to like making the brains of the guinea overheat as he left his statement at that. Al nodded and followed up on his colleague's words. Simply winning your way through the tournament doesn't matter. You need to show the judges why you should be promoted. Running through the competition is nice and all, but that doesn't show very much leadership or tactical skill. Anko's grin dropped and a serious expression found its way to her face. We don't need some kind of mindless juggernaut out in the field with the power to give orders. Many good shinobi will be killed that way. She barely knows the flinch from two of the competitors from different countries. If you win, you can show more reasons as to why you should be promoted, but you can go the entire tournament without meriting promotion. The grin then came back to her face. On the other hand, your team could lose in the first round and one or even all of you could be considered for promotion. Exactly, <laughs> Kitsuchi said with a chuckle. Each round will be set up as such. Both teams will pick a side of a coin. The winner of that resulting coin toss chooses how the teams will compete for that round. Either one-on-one -on -one matches or three-on-three -three team battles. One-on-one -on -one matches will be selected random with a drawing of the fighters going up at the end of each bout until all three members of a team are unable to continue. Team battles will go on until all of one side cannot continue or surrender. Practice set around the battlefield will deem whether or not a shinobi can continue in the battle and will escort the defeated to safety. It is possible to die during this tournament, just so you know. He was rather pleased when no one seemed to be scared away by that prospect. Very good. At that time, a screen dropped down from the ceiling as Al spoke again. We're now going to show you the random drawing for your first round matches in this tournament, so pay attention, okay? Bracket 1. Match 1. Rock Lee, Hugo Neji, Tenten, vs. Samui, Kadoui, and Omoi. Match 2. Nara Shikamaru, Uzumaki Naruto, and Yamanaki Ino versus Hisashi, Mizaru, and Jun. Match 7, the winner of match 1 versus the winner of match 2. Winner heads to semifinals. Bracket 2, match 3, Fu, Hoyuki, and Dorobu versus Aburamashino, Inuzuki Kiba, and Yugi Hinata. Match 4, Uchiha Sasuke, Akimichi Choji, and Haruno Sakura versus Kinudo Dosu, Abu Mizaku, and Kitsuchi Ken. Match 8, the winner of match 3 versus the winner of match 4. Winner hits the semifinals. Bracket 3, Match 5, Gar of the Sand, Tamari, and Kankuro versus Oboro, Mbui, and Kagari. Match 6, Yakushi Kabuto, Suguri Misumi, and Akuro Yoi versus Hojo Arata, Obato Momoko, and Gekido Jin. Match 9, the winner of Match 5 versus the winner of Match 6. The winner advances directly to the final round. Semifinals, Match 10, winner of Match 7 versus winner of Match 8. Winner in bracket 1 versus winner of bracket 2. Winner heads to the final round. The winner of match 9 will advance to the final round. Winner of bracket 3 will receive a buy out of the semifinals or to the final round. Finals. Match 11. Winner of match 10 versus winner of match 9. Troublesome. Chikamaru muttered right at the bat as he looked at the tournament setup. So now we're entertainment. Great. Well, that was what he said out loud. 
His brain was already working hard in thought. So if we wanted to go all the way through the tournament, we'd have to fight an extra fight. I knew this shooting exam stuff would be more trouble than it was worth. What he wouldn't give for a nice, mellow D-rank mission right now. Naruto, on the other hand, was paying attention to another part of the setup. So that guard guy is on the other side of the brackets? Good. The fight against his clones had told him more than he needed to know about Gara. He was going to stay as far away from him as he could if he could help it. He most certainly didn't want to tangle with him anytime soon, but he still had his confidence about him. So what if we do fight him? It's just sand. There's got to be a way to beat it. There has to be. And if we end up going against him, I'll know how to do it by then. With his thoughts so firmly on who will be fighting who on the board, he never noticed the stone getting with shaved head, Hasashi, staring at him and grinning. Ino did, however, and gave Hasashi her best warning look to stop with the evil eyes or else. He just looked at her in amusement and mouthed the words, just wait, while chuckling to himself before deciding to look away again. With that issue over and done with, Ino decided to get herself a little psychological advantage, or to mess with someone. Well, looks like I won't be seeing Billboard Brown until the semifinals, if she even makes it that far. She said, to no one in particular. What was that, Eno pig? Sakura replied harshly. It was easy to hear since Eno wasn't really trying to keep that statement to herself. Your slacker team probably won't even make it onto the field to begin with. She shot back challengingly. Hey, Eno said with her hands on her hips. Don't think that just because you have Sasuke-kun on your team, you can beat us when the time comes. They can't protect you the entire time. He and Chojo will probably be tired from carrying your butt through the first few rounds. And we've got the human hummingbird on our team. She finished, poking a non-attentive Naruto on the head as he was still looking up at the tournament brackets. And he'll never run out of steam. Huh? Ino's poke at his head brought Naruto back down from his own muddling thoughts. Was someone talking to me? He asked, turning towards Ino and getting an innocent whistle from her before he noticed Sakura was staring at Ino with a twitching brow. Hey, Sakura! Good luck in the tournament, huh? Sakura stopped glaring at Ino to look up at Naruto and blink at his good-natured offer of luck. She wasn't so annoyed by him the way she was in the academy, maybe because she didn't have him hanging off her like a little lost puppy every day. Oh, thanks, Naruto. Naruto in small doses wasn't really bad at all. And from their time and wave, she knew for sure that he wasn't a terrible ninja. He did have a pretty even fight with Sasuke. He still couldn't win, though, and Sasuke was even better now than he was back then. That was what she thought. Still, what was she going to do? Hit him for saying hi and wishing her luck? That would be completely absurd. Who would do something like that? Aw, that's my Goldie, Eno remarked with a smirk. He's such a nice boy, trying to keep the spirit of the riffraff up. Getting another growl out of Sakura, Eno was thoroughly satisfied with the thought that she had gotten into Sakura's head. At least for now. I'm never going to be able to stop this, am I? Naruto thought to himself as he saw Eno and Sakura break into another argument that simply wasn't going to end until one of them ended up with Sasuke. If that ever happened at all, and it probably wouldn't even end then. The proctors could hear the chattering amongst the gaming break out, and that was beginning to steer away from the focused conversation to just all out talking. Therefore, there was no reason to keep them there any longer. All right, Kitsuchi said, his voice booming through the echoing room and getting the attention of all. You're all aware of what will take place in five weeks. Return home and prepare. Make sure your next effort is your best one because it's your last chance to make an impact. Now, you're all dismissed. Yeah. Anko said with a nod. We've actually all got to leave. The samurai pretty much said that we don't have to go home, but we've got to get the hell out of here. At least until a week before the final exam. She gave the getting a wave and her sweet yet threatening smile. I'm looking forward to watching you all kick the crap out of each other. Hope you brats all make it back here in one piece. After the explanation of the final exam that was to take place in five weeks, the joining of the Leaf teams that had made it that far to begin with took their teams to a buffet-style restaurant at Kakashi's behest. Mostly for the sake of the man's wallet since he had to treat his team, which included Choji to something like this at least once. He was more or less obligated to his Team 7 sensei. As everyone currently had a plate, and the younger ninja especially took to the meal with vigor due to not having anything remotely similar to it in the last two days, Naruto seemed to be just more or less picking at his food. Most had assumed that since if you stabbed Naruto, he would bleed broth instead of blood, his mood was plainly because of the distinct lack of ramen as an option at this restaurant. As loath as he was to do so, Shikamaru, who was sitting on one side of Naruto between him and Choji, knew that this wasn't about food since no one was forcing Naruto to eat any vegetables or anything like that. Therefore, he felt the need to speak on the matter. Naruto, what's the matter? Shouldn't he be all fired up about the next part of the exam or something? Said boy turned towards him with a questioning look. Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm not excited about this at all, since I doubt you or Eno are going to quit. So I have to fight so you guys don't get killed in some 3 on 2 or something. Then was where Naruto actually got to thinking about something. Team 10 didn't have to win the whole tournament. They just had to do well enough to get promoted. That meant that they didn't have to fight Gar and his team in the final round if both were to make it that far. No matter how good he thought he was, there was just something barbaric about Gar that he was missing. The way he slaughtered so many clones without blinking, even while staring at an explosion in the face, was unnerving. And Naruto's clones hadn't even scratched him. Hey, Shikamaru finally said with a bit of assertion in his voice. 
What are you frying your brain thinking about over there? It's weird when you're not jumping off the walls about showing everyone how good you are, whatever it is you're usually babbling about. At that moment, Kiba spoke up. He's just thinking about all the ways Akamaru and me are gonna kick his ass, if you guys even get that far. As he grinned in appreciation of his own jibe, Akamaru barked from beside Kiba, sitting on the same cushion at the low raised table. Hearing that brought Naruto back into the moment. I know your fleas are bothering you, Kiba, but keep all that barking of yours down. I already told you, whoever fights me is going home sooner than they think. Don't make me muzzle you. Naruto's response made Kiba turn towards Shikamaru and chuckle. There, you're welcome. Now he's back to normal, he said before he returned to eating. Naruto turned towards Shikamaru, who was looking at him with a scrutinizing gaze before he started to speak under his breath. I know you're put off by that sand kid you told us about. Naruto's eyes widened and he was about to dispute the claim before Shikamaru cut him off. Save it, alright? I was near the kid when we were wrestling for the second exam, remember? The entire time, he was just staring at me until I got away from him. I could see his muscles fighting to keep from moving, like he was holding himself back from trying to kill me. The blood loss was smothering. Blue eyes locked on to Shikamaru's and couldn't understand why he was so calm if he understood. You don't get it, Shikamaru. I threw 50 clones at him. None of them ever even touched him. They never got close. It must have been like a beehive in there, but he killed them all by himself and he didn't even move an inch until they were all gone. Stop worrying about it, Shikamaru finally said, leaving no more room for argument. If you're that worried about it, then we'll come up with something by the time we have to fight the sand team. But remember, there's always one thing we can do if we still got nothing by then. So don't worry about it. He pointed down the table where Sasuke was more or less sandwiched between Ino and Sakura, doing his best to just eat his food and ignore them. They sure aren't worrying yet. Naruto observed what Shikamaru had been pointing at and tilted his head at how Sasuke seemed to be indifferently letting the two pick between them. He had to wonder how he could take it. It must have been a practice sort of focus, to ignore the things around you. Maybe Naruto had to try and practice some of that right now and block it out. There was nothing he could do but prepare. Shikamaru would make sure he had his things in order as well. They had a month. He would worry then. Who knew? Maybe then, there wouldn't be anything to worry about. Three days later, village hidden in the leaves, Naruto's apartment. The trip back to the leaf, for all the Ginnin who had gone out to the exam, was pretty quiet. Those that were eliminated earlier on in the testing pretty much headed back before the end of the testing period on their own to avoid any mortification and wall on their own disappointment. Those that stayed treated like the time for a small break before being subjected to the Walk of Shame. Walk of Shame because the ones from the leaf that had made it to the finals were mostly kids. Nine rookies, three single year Ginnin, and a team of the Ginnin that had failed several times in the past and made it. It was not a good look. It was admittedly quite a good feeling when one of them would look over at one of the ninja that had failed and found them unable to straightforwardly meet their gaze. The same ones that were harping on them for being younger at the start were now sitting back unable to even watch from the sidelines. Naruto was more or less grinning all the way to the village gates and then some. Tomorrow, matters of how the next month of training with Team 10 would be set up. But for now, it was time to rest and take some pride that they had thoroughly kicked some ass. According to Shikamaru, even if he didn't get promoted in the end, going so far in his first attempt to do so would keep his mother off his back for quite some time. So, at least until the next exams rolled around. Walking into the apartment, Naruto most certainly didn't expect to find Jiraiya sitting on his couch, eating his food, and going over his attempts to better his handwriting for his own ceiling jutsu studies. But that was what he bore witness to once he entered his home. However, What the hell are you doing in here, pervy sensei? Hearing Naruto's voice, the tall white-haired man turned to him before registering the new title he had just been labeled with. The hell? What happened to Jiraiya sensei? Naruto points directly at him with a look of intent in his eyes. That random stuff in that book of yours? All that crap the week before we left to go to the land of iron? You totally corrupted me! And saying that put a grin on Jiraiya's face. Why are you happy about that? No reason. Jiraiya stated cryptically before seeing to vanish and reappear behind Naruto to pick him up in a big hug. Oh kid, I'm so happy! If you say I'm influencing you before I've even really spent that much time with you, then you really are the ideal pupil. I mean, if I can do all of that with just a book for you even really get to know me, then think of the things I can pass down to you. He was ignoring the fact that Naruto was an impressionable 12 year old boy that lacked distinct male role models until a few months ago, as well as the fact that such a dynamic personality such as his own would rub off. Now to really get the ball rolling, I gotta teach you the wonders of the female form. The first thing to know, I will set you on fire. Naruto said in a growl as Jiraiya had yet to put him down. Why are you in my house anyway? Are you rich? It wouldn't have surprised Naruto if Jiraiya had in fact stayed in his apartment the entire time he had been gone. For some reason, he just came off as that sort of guy. Jiraiya let Naruto down and pointed at him in grandiose fashion. Kid, I'm a sage. Despite all my monetary riches and abundant assets, I am more suited to live off the fat of the land. Good, Naruto said as he walked to his front door and opened it up to escort Jiraiya out. Then go do that, because I'm busy. I've got to figure out what to do next for the finals of the training exams. A pleasantly surprised look came over Jiraiya's face at hearing that. You made it that far on your first try, and you're just a rookie to boot. Way to go, kid. That's damn impressive. It honestly was. He couldn't recall the last time any Leaf Ginning had accomplished that feat as rookie, even when the exams were village exclusive. So what are you gonna do now? 
Naruto looked at the man who seemed legitimately interested in how he had done. He figured that he'd pretty much just get that week of having Jiraiya assist him with his sealing jutsu studies after he broke the news about the Kyuubi, and that would more or less be it. A big part of him was glad that wasn't the case. Well, I don't know yet. I'm supposed to be meeting up with Asuma Sensei tomorrow so we can figure that out. A nod came from Jiraiya. That was reasonable enough to him. When you figure it out, come and find me. If you can pass one test that I give to those that I see as having potential to be my disciples, then I will assist you with a little bit of your training. And not just your sealing jutsu. Really? Naruto was skeptical. All they did on the times they had spent together previously was Jiraiya would instruct him on how to get down the making of basic seals perfectly. Not a flaw allowed in them. And they would peek on girls near some waterfall. Er, Jiraiya would peek on some girls near some waterfall. Not Naruto. And no, clones didn't count as him peeking. You'll help me out. But what can you teach besides sealing jutsu? Jiraiya gave Naruto a shock look this time before palming his face. What are they teaching you runs in the academy these days? I thought I was supposed to be a big deal. He slid his hand down his face and deadpanned at Naruto. Look, sealing jutsu is cool and everything when you get good at it, but if you really think all I'm good for is sealing, then I'm even more insulted than when you first walked into the house. Why? Naruto asked with a tilt of his head. Cause I'm the best damn ninja in the entire world, brat! Jiraiya exclaimed in a grandiose and splendiferous <laughs> manner before coughing and settling down. In my own honest and humble opinion. Then, why aren't you Hokage? Naruto replied without missing a beat, a deadpan look in full effect on his whisker marked face. Why is the old man still running things if you're supposed to be the best ninja in the village? Jiraiya had to fight the urge to face Palm once again, mumbling about how this kid apparently wanted to be Hokage. Look, just being the strongest ninja doesn't make you qualified to be the leader of the village. For all the ass I can kick, I really don't feel comfortable leading a large group to save my own life. I kind of hated being a Joni when I had to lead teams of my own just because of that. I'm more a bulldozer, I've never really been much for tactics, but I don't really suck at them. Naruto then thought about how the proctors introduced in the last test of the tuning exam said that simply being stronger than all the other competitors wouldn't automatically register a promotion, even if they won the entire tournament, and that had to get stricter the further up the ladder one attempts to climb. So I guess she'll challenge right for all when we first met. Being strong as a Hokage is fine, but if I don't know what to do with it, being strong won't matter. So Toby sensei is the man though. That's why he's still Hokage, Jiraiya said, shaking his head as if even dredging up memories of the third Hokage in action took him back to those days. I can talk about myself all I want to, but that's the ninja you should try to be like. If you don't believe me, then go ahead and ask him to spare some of his personal training time to fight you. <laughs> he let out a chuckle. And make sure I'm there to see that fight, because I need a good laugh these days. No thanks, Naruto said, only imagining what kind of horrible things the current reigning Hokage could do to him if he was stupid enough to pick a fight with him, even just for shits and giggles. Jiraiya patted him on the head. Good boy. You know, you remind me a lot of me back when I was a guinea. Naruto raised his eyebrows, Jiraiya kept a hand on his head. Really? How? Hard-headed kid. Jiraiya started to explain matter-of-factly. A straightforward kind of guy. Oh, and let's not forget the fact you also have a smoking hot blonde girl on your team that's only going to obtain bombshell status by the time you're 18, just like the one on my team did. Naruto shrugged Jiraiya's hand off his head and glared up at him. You mean Eno? At that, a grin crossed Jiraiya's face. So you're admitting that she's good looking? That's a start. He ignored Naruto's twitching eye and took note that Naruto didn't vehemently dispute the fact that he thought Eno was pretty. Now listen, she'll wind up being a total knockout if my early warning system is still in effect, but she probably won't ever get the same miracle chest that Tsunade has. And if you're lucky, she won't have Tsunade's temper or absurdly abuse of strength. What does that have to do with any fucking thing we are talking about right now? Naruto asked loudly, waving his arms indignantly as he was sick of the current conversation. Mostly because he didn't want to talk about a 12 year old girl he was going to see tomorrow with a 50 year old man that he knew to be and had accepted as a raging pervert. I don't even think I know who you're talking about anyway. And stop talking about Eno's chest, you pervert! Daria smirked and tapped his head like he was mentally one step ahead. Hmm, 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 hmm. I don't need to make you talk about it. I made you see it the day we met, remember? He then saw Naruto's face turn beet red either out of anger or embarrassment. It didn't matter, both were good as far as Jiraiya was concerned. You're welcome. Jiraiya was certain that Naruto would thank him later, eventually. Oh, that is it, damn it! Sexy Jutsu! In a puff of smoke, Naruto transformed into a rather infamous nude female form that gave his Jutsu its namesake, expecting Jiraiya to be flat on his back, looking up at the ceiling. Sadly, he was somewhat off of his estimation of what effect the Jutsu would have on Jiraiya. All that occurred was a widening of Jiraiya's eyes in shock as he observed the jutsu before a grin stretched across his face and a slow nosebleed began to drip from his nose. He leisurely pulled out a pen and paper and began to write. <laughs> is it wrong of me to say I think we'd be closer if this was actually the real you? Just as Jiraiya realized how what he said could have been taken, Naruto transformed back with a very unamused look on his face. Yeah, that, that does sound kind of creepy, doesn't it? Naruto let out a defeated sigh and once again opened his front door. Please get out of my house, Purby Sensei. I need to go take a shower now. I don't feel clean. 
Jiraiya blinked and nodded slowly. I wouldn't worry too much right now. This is just one of those moments that we're both going to suppress and forget for years until something really traumatic dresses the memory back up by accident. He waved weakly as he stepped outside the door. By tomorrow, you forget this happened. Naruto just blinked with his hand on the door. Forget what? He said, feigning ignorance about the recent incident before closing the door. Good boy, Jiraiya said from behind it. The next day, Team 10 Training Ground. The high of making it to the finals of the training exams had faded, at least for Naruto and Ino it had. It was never clear at all whether Shikamaru was even ecstatic in the first place for achieving such a feat due to his self-professed long-term goals of mediocrity. Thus, by the time they sat in front of Asuma, they had significantly sobered down from the swagger they had been traveling down the roads with the other day. That was fantastic for him since he would get a more objective outlook from them on what needed to be done to succeed in their upcoming matches against the Stone team in the first round. Alright, the most important thing about you three is that you more or less cover each other's weaknesses. Shikamaru was the first one he pointed at. You're lazy and unmotivated, he bluntly stated. Shikamaru merely shrugged. It wasn't like he was being told something he didn't already know about himself. He was a slacker and damnably proud of it. At least he would be if being proud of himself wasn't so troublesome. Yeah, I know. I've met your father, Asuma stated before sticking a cigarette and lighting it up. I'm afraid there's not much that's ever going to change that except for immediate life or death circumstances. You don't ever seem to have any sense of urgency, and that can be a double-edged sword. But then, where you lack enthusiasm and purpose behind the things you do, Naruto and Ino make up for that. You're the most intelligent one of the team, and your teammates allow for that to be of actual use by staying far more active than you, allowing you to think more clearly. When in the heat of a pitched battle, you always look for someone to get your shadow into the mix. The one thing you're not lazy with is your work with the Nara clan jutsu for certain, and you have a plethora of cheap tricks that you can use very well. <laughs> he laughed at the frown that appeared on Shikamaru's face. There's nothing wrong with a cheap trick. The more of them you have, the less actual trump cards you have to reveal to win. While he wasn't as stagnant on the battlefield as he once had been, Shikamaru was still basically the slowest member of the team who preferred staying inactive even while in combat. Pointing at Ino next, Asuma continued. Ino, you've worked hard to do more to supplement what you can do with your family techniques. You come away ways to threaten your opponents completely and keep them from thinking about your jutsus in the first place, even if they know you're Yamanaka, because of your poisons. No matter what, you have the ability to switch up your battle approach from a ranged poison attack to a mid-range attempt to use your clan technique. Either or has potential to end battle in a hurry. Eno smiled at the compliment. Learning to make all those poisons and the tools she used wasn't easy. If I had to point on a weakness, it would be that once things get up close and personal, you're somewhat lost in a fight, but a month isn't time to fix that. You also lack turn focused. Most of the time, if there isn't something that you can handle or solve relatively quickly, you'll leave Naruto and Shikamaru to do it. You need to fix that, because a tuning has to be a problem solver. Lives will be in your hands, Eno. Naruto was inwardly dreading his own turn. Back in the academy, he'd always hated getting the rundown in public form about what his strengths were and what he could improve on. Part of him still believed that he was about to take a tongue lashing due to his having never really been commented on his skill set due to his lack of actual existence while in school. Naruto? Asuma says he looked at the boy in question, who actually flinched due to being caught up in his own thoughts about what might be said. You cover this team's most central weakness. You're the close range specialist the way I figured you'd be from the beginning, and you've only improved since then. Even without that machete, if you're disarmed, I don't see very many getting find a way to handle you up close. You cater to your own strength of having tons of chakra with the way to use your shadow clone, and you're learning something new altogether with ceiling jutsu in your own private study. That was a better compliment than Naruto thought he'd receive, but Asuma wasn't done. The thing is, though, you don't really have anything that's effective once you get outside of, say, 5 feet to use against the opponent. If you can't reach him or your clones can't reach him, then you gotta rely on Ino and Shikamaru to use a trick or drive him back towards you for you to attack them together. I'll also say that you have a little bit of a knack for unorthodox maneuvers, but you don't seem to try and dig that deep into yourself until you're in some kind of trouble. If I were you, I'd try to cultivate that a little more. Start planning ahead a bit. Flying by the seat of your pants is only good when falling is the alternative. If you really want it, you have the drive to do way better, Naruto. Well, that wasn't exactly the dressing down that Naruto had been expecting when it came to his time to be scrutinized. All he could really do in return was nod, indicating that he understood. Having said his bit on each of his guinea, Asuma switched gears. Now, about your more technical weaknesses. Shikamaru the more physical aspects of the job as well as the drive. You know, with the close range fighting and Naruto with anything have to do with range at all. Now that said, there's not much I can do about that. All three Yenin had to keep from face faulting. Hold on, hold on, this isn't about fixing that stuff. A month is just enough time for a patch job that will get you through the rest of the exams on the part of your skills. Right now, it's time to accentuate the positives and hide your negatives. Ino and Naruto both looked at him in a confused manner, while Shikamaru breathed a sigh of relief as he seemed like he understood Asuma's point. Asuma decided to explain to make sure that everyone was following along. If the problem is that you can't get your opponent outside of your range of attack, or you get your ass kicked once you get within arm's length of an enemy, why go there? Hide it. Highlight your positive points. Show the judges that you know damn well what you're good at and what you're not good at. Show them that you can avoid being put in a situation where it would even matter. 
This is a showcase, and you're gonna wanna make yourselves look good. Damn good. That means no half assing it. So, what exactly should we do now? Naruto asked with a squinted look of hard concentration on his face. <laughs> Asuma chuckled. You all have shown that if it comes down to it, you can come up with some really nasty combinations of your skills. I want more of that to come come tournament time. In the case of a team battle, I don't want it to even be an issue of who would win. You all cover the other's ass with what you can do. Now how are you going to handle your schedule for the month? He asked before noticing that they were just staring at him. Oh, I'm not helping you with this part. I'm actually asking how are you going to handle it? The three moved together with Shikamaru starting off with a sigh. Okay, we have a month to get this together. I say the first half that we work on our own personal training and the second half we get together. And on the seventh day we do whatever we want to at the time. Like sleep or do nothing at all. This was still Shikamaru after all. Oh! Naruto said after taking the idea of the schedule. So the seventh day is so we don't get all burnt out on the training and start slacking off during our actual training sessions, right? Or so we can look into something different that we're probably going to work on normally, right? Yeah, sure. Let's just go with that. Shikamaru answered abruptly before looking between Naruto and Ino. So is that good with both of you or what? Ino shrugged his shoulders. That's just fine with me. I'm going to try and kick daddy's ass into gear and see if he'll help me with my training. Maybe he can teach me a new jutsu. She wasn't holding her breath on that, however. Her dad was very stingy with the idea of giving her another jutsu from the family collection. He wanted her to perfect the mind-body-switch jutsu, but barely having to take much time to aim in order to make sure that she wouldn't miss and leave her body vulnerable, as well as making sure she could release the jutsu quickly to prevent damage from occurring while she was in the body she was possessing. Hearing Ino talk about a new jutsu made Naruto think about the new jutsu that he came come up with and had yet to test on an actual person, but he had other things that he needed to deal with before he could go and play with a concept attack. I like it, Naruto said in reference to the schedule of the workouts. That way, if anyone comes up with something new they can do, then they have enough time to get it down well enough to use. They could probably work it into one of their formations or battle strategies if someone could master a new jutsu over the course of a month. Asuma watched them work out their schedule, and it worked out great for him. Unless someone asked him specifically for one-on-one -on -one training, then he would show up three days out of the week to help them all as a team. The rest of the week, he could come up with his own ways to help them and do his own thing. Maybe get in some training of his own. Ever since he had started training this team, he hadn't had much time to train himself. He could help Team 10, keep himself in shape for the month, and teach his team to be self-sufficient at the same time. It was an all-around win. He stepped in and commented on the plan of action for the month. You all seem to have your own ideas of what you want to do. Just remember that even on your personal days or off days, you can always come find me if you need the help. You all have the resources you need to succeed, so there's no reason the three of you can't all come out of this thing as Chuni. He then thought of something else as an afterthought. Especially since I still have money on all three of you to outdo the other Leaf teams. No pressure though. All three of the Team 10 Guineas spoke up simultaneously. Don't, Don't worry, worry, there isn't, isn't any. They said in dry tones of voice after hearing that Osma still had a bet on them. Why would they care about money they were never going to see? Later that day. Since today was technically a personal training day, Naruto was not willing to waste a single second of it. After the short team meeting dismissed and they all split up, Naruto went looking for Jiraiya, and due to the fact that Naruto could now pin chakra signatures to certain people with his scouting jutsu due to his jump and skill with it, he could locate Jiraiya. It also didn't hurt that he knew the places where the man might be. Either the hot spring or that waterfall of the hot whim that Naruto worked with Jiraiya at the week before they had left for the land of iron. It was still summer, even though the land of fire weather was always pretty pleasant. Thus, he figured that women would keep going back to that waterfall, hence, Jiraiya would be there. And lo and behold, Naruto found him in the same field that they had used previously crouched and staring through the bushes with a scope as he giggled to his heart's content at the scantily clad women frolicking in the river behind it. Ooh, that's right ladies, bring your friends, the more the merrier I always say. <laughs> that's it, go ahead and give her a high hug right in the water! You haven't seen her in a long while, have you? Naruto just walked up to the man quietly before going right behind him and cocked his foot back, prepared to deliver a powerful kick to the man's rear end. The moment he let his foot fly though, a massacre on his face, well, Naruto didn't know quite what happened. All he knew was that one second he was about to kick Jiraiya, and the next he was on his back, 10 meters away, and looking up at the sky. Huh, Shikamaru's kind of on some of this whole cloud watching thing. I kind of want to go to sleep. That was possibly the potential concussion that he had just suffered talking, though. Naruto slowly sat up to see Jiraiya still looking through the bushes, only with his fist outstretched delivering the punch that sent Naruto flying. That was fast. He never even saw or felt the man shift his body to do it. Don't sneak up on me while I'm doing my research, kid. Jiraiya says he kept peeping. I take my occupation as a writer of adult fiction very seriously. This is my work. Naruto stood back up, dusting himself off. Whatever you say, pervy sensei. Get some more stuff for your porn books later. You told me to find you after I was done Asuma sensei and my team. I just said it was adult literature. Jiraiya turned and shouted at Naruto, staying quiet enough not to turn on the girls in the distance to the fact that he was peeping on them. Oh, and about the training, could you come back later? This is some prime viewing time. 
A firm shake of the head no from Naruto is the answer. Mm -mm. I can't do that, Pervy Sensei. I will not be an enabler to your filthy addiction. You weren't saying that last week. Jiraiya muttered, getting Naruto's cheeks to turn red momentarily, as it was clear then he could see what Jiraiya saw in spying on women. Alright, alright. If time is money, then let's hurry up and have you impress me so I can finish teaching you that seal of yours. A seal? Jiraiya was going to teach him a seal? But he thought he was supposed to come up with his own eventually without his personal study. You're going to teach me a seal? Wait, you've been teaching me a seal? When? Back the week before you left. Why do you think I was making you write practice arrays while I was throwing rocks at you? Because it was funny? Naruto replied questioningly. It had been a miserable week for certain. But Naruto had come back every time with the promise that Jiraiya would teach him something. Apparently he had been doing so the entire time. Yes, Jiraiya said with a groan in his face. Yes, it was fun, but it also served a purpose, to teach you how to draw seals and focus at the same time. What if the course of an entire battle was counting on you finishing a seal? Would you allow the explosions and the fighting that would probably be going on around you to stop you from finishing it or mess it up? That was the most basic lesson I could give you. And it's important to the actual technique you're going to learn now. First, though, Naruto didn't like the way he said that last part. First what? <laughs> Jiraiya began to laugh slowly. <laughs> First, you have to show me something important before you really begin. Something important? Naruto just stared at Jiraiya with a twitch in his eye. I'm not showing you the sexy jutsu again, so forget it, you pervert. Not that. Jiraiya says he crossed his arms before pulling out some special ink and a few prepared scrolls, dropping them on the ground directly in front of himself before making a trio of hand seals. Shut up, clone jutsu! A clone of Jiraiya appeared and picked up the supplies on the ground. The clone set up the scrolls in a 20 feet circle in circumference around himself and sat down in the middle. Naruto was curious, but Jiraiya was quick to explain. You're going to protect my clone from me. I'm going to attack that clone, which is going to represent you or a clone of you. Attempt the jutsu I'm going to teach you. His voice was now gravely serious. When you get good with this jutsu, you'll be able to pull it off in less than two minutes. Until then, you won't be able to perform without at least that long in preparation time. I had to fight you? Naruto said, somewhat dismayed at the thought of fighting Jiraiya. Not because he figured he would hurt the man. It was vice versa in this case. I can't beat you. You're not supposed to, Jiraiya said seriously. You're only supposed to keep me away from the circle the clone is sitting in. If I pass the circle, that means I can attack my dummy clone, and the juice will never be finished. It's really important that you owe me off for three minutes, since that will be the minimum amount of time that you yourself and each to prepare the jutsu I plan to teach you, at its best at least. He pulled out a stopwatch and held it up. Naruto looked at the clone in the circle, and then at Jiraiya before nodding. Taking that as Naruto's acceptance of the test, Jiraiya began to walk 40 yards away from Naruto before turning around and giving a few moments to get ready. Do whatever you think you have to in order to keep me away from that circle, alright? He instructed and was pleased to see Naruto immediately make 50 shadow clones in order to block him. Good, but when you yourself use the seal to have a clone use it, you're going to need most of the chakra you're split between the clones you have out right now. You didn't say I couldn't use any though, Naruto said as he and all of his clones slowly drew their machetes and held them at the ready. Start! He demanded one to get this test over with. Jiraiya immediately ran towards the circle that was being protected by Naruto's clones, and scoffed when he saw a direct charge from around 10 of them coming his way. Deciding to not flat out blitz Naruto immediately, because if properly motivated, he could end this in an instant, Jiraiya decided to hold back enough to give Naruto a fighting chance on his first try. It's not really like Asuma's sensei since I can't really stretch the blade or anything, but it's better than nothing. Naruto thought to himself as he and his clones started to generate wind chakra to the blades of their weapons. One day he'd have to ask Asuma how to stretch the chakra extension of the blade and hope that it was easy enough to get down quickly. Until then, he was supposed to come at Jiraiya with everything he had, and the clones got the message loud and clear. Jiraiya noticed all of Naruto's clones about to attempt to cut him down with their machetes, and remembered that this kid was trained with Asuma. Crap, I forgot the kid uses wind chakra. He can channel chakra in that blade like Asuma can. So even if he uses defensive jutsu, there was a chance that Naruto could still get through it. 20 seconds, he thought to himself. Jiraiya bit into his finger and made a few hand seals. Summoning Jutsu! In a puff of smoke, Jiraiya was replaced by a large toad, bigger than the man himself had been. It wore thick samurai armor around his torso and on his arms, and it blocked the strikes of Naruto's clones. Jiraiya, however, was nowhere in sight, something the clones took notice of, and this allowed the toad to destroy them all with a sweeping swipe of his tongue. A toad? Naruto said to himself in amazement before realizing that this test was still going on. So where's Pervy Sensei? He asked himself as the remaining clones all surrounded the ceiling circle that marked the objective of the test. The armored toad rushed towards them and drew away several Naruto's in an attempt to keep from bull rushing the circle and just ending the test then and there, stretching out the defensive perimeter even further. Jiraiya then reappeared in a dangerously closed zone near the clones and the circle and immediately initiated his next attack. Hell Needles! From his hardened hair, singular follicles shot out like needles. They could either take the hits or move and allow them to damage Jiraiya's clone, which was the goal to protect. Naruto's clones tried to block the needles, but they were too numerous, too fast, and he didn't have the reaction time to do something like that against something so small. A dozen more clones were shot down by that jutsu, leaving a major hole in the defense that was very close to Jiraiya and allowed him to jump right through, before stopping in a pose as he breached the hole. And that's time! 
He looked at the stopwatch he had placed around his neck for safekeeping. 56 seconds. Not bad. You're almost a third of the way there. Too bad every second mattered. God damn it! Naruto exclaimed in defeat as he dispelled his clones and pulled at his hair. He pointed over at the toad who was still standing at attention before croaking to Jiraiya and disappearing in another puff of smoke. And what the hell was that? I didn't say I would never summon anything. Jiraiya said as he stepped out of the unharmed circle. I was just Gama. I'm not gonna throw the major toads at you, kid. Naruto looked between Jiraiya and where the toad had been standing, and he felt a spark fry his brain. I didn't even know you could do that. Can you teach me how to do that? As far as Naruto was concerned, that toad was badass. On the other hand, Jiraiya was pleased that Naruto liked the toad. Maybe later. For now, we're working on you earning the ceiling jutsu. It's really high level. First, you need to hold me off for three minutes. What does this jutsu even do? Naruto asked, having not cared previously, but after getting his ass thoroughly handed to him in a matter of a minute, he wanted to know what he was working for in the first place. If it takes three minutes to load up, it's gotta be pretty awesome, right? It's the ultimate equalizer, kid. Jiraiya said with a knowing grin. So I'm gonna say for now. Once you finish this, I'll tell you everything you want to know. Now back to work. Let's try this again. End of chapter 20.